good to be back in the house of the Lord again. I'd like to say that. It's always good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. We count it a, a great privilege and a great blessing that we uh, were able to come and were able to uh, feel his presence. Uh, now, I'm sure there's a lot of gathering this morning that uh, are gathering, but it's uh, they're having a false, a false feeling. Right. They're, they're there because uh, everybody else is, and they go on for a different things. But anyway, thank the Lord that we we know the truth, and uh, uh, the Lord, the truth is going to make us free completely. And so, this morning we want to study just a little bit in the book of Mark in the eighth chapter. We studied some last week about the Lebanon. We want to talk, talk to you a little bit this morning and read a little bit this morning about the uh, fasting and the uh, some of the things that took place during these meetings when Jesus was uh, doing these miracles. But in, Ma in, Ma in Mark 8, chapter, uh, in chapter 8, verse 1, in those days, the multitude be, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples with unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. So we want to see this, this, this word that he, he spoke to them this morning. And they, if I'm not mistaken, they, they had had a great uh, thing happen to them. And uh, one of the things that happened was that John the Baptist had his head cut off. And they were very uncomfortable. And Jesus uh, spoke to them and comforted their hearts. And, and he brought them into a place where that they could be uh, by themselves and kind of re, uh, regroup. But uh, the... the People wouldn't let them because they seen Jesus with them, and they. But anyway, here's a, here's a large group that's with them now. He's saying to them this morning, or uh, to them this that day, he said, "I have compassion on thee." And this morning, we need to understand this morning that we are in the same condition as these great multitude of people were. We don't think it, but we are, uh, because we need His love, His compassion, His sympathy, and His self is uh, seeing us suffer and, and uh, his kindness and desire to help us as we uh, live down here in this uh, life that we're, we're facing. And as Brother Larry mentioned this morning, things is changing. Uh, I don't look for the change to the, for the better for the Christian. Right. Uh, I look for it to be uh, a thing that is going to uh, regroup the Christians uh, I think it's going to regroup the lost, and I think that uh, these things they're going to come together. The lost is, and they're going to come together with the the uh, false denominations, and uh, uh, there won't be any problem with that because right. they'll they'll bend to the rule of the law of the state. But for the Christians that are coming together, they need to be a separate group. And here we see that uh, this group that was here was all by themselves and Jesus was the, was the leader here and listen he says here uh, I have compassion and I want you to know this this morning Jesus Christ and God has got compassion on us Amen. he understands he understands our needs he understands all about us and we have no we have no reason except the flesh to fear. Now, the flesh will fear because the thing of it is it's scared of the things that are going on and, and the, the thing comes to us if this happens or if this happens or if this happens. Well, we are going to have to let it happen and see what the Lord takes care of because we see in, this, in these, these verses that we're going to read that Jesus did a miracle of miracles here and he gave out a good he gave out a good message as he was talking to the disciples when he said I have compassion on the the multitude because the multitude represents I believe those that are saved his people and so this morning we know that he has a people and we know that he has a chosen people Amen. and so these are the ones that he has compassion for these is the ones that he has a desire to uh, to see <clears throat> 
live peaceably down here on this earth. And so this is why I chose this this morning and why that I seek the leadership of the Lord in this. And he says, because they have, the, talking about the multitude, he says, and the reason I have compassion on them is because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Now, there is a time in our, our Christian lives sometimes when we do have to suffer. Mm -hmm. And here is one of the times this morning when they, they were there. But listen, I think that they were in such a, a, a enjoyable, joyful time and praising the Lord and, and being in the presence of Jesus that it wasn't all that terrible. But Jesus recognized their need of worldly things. Also, their bodies were, were empty and they needed help. So he says here, they've been with excuse me, three days and have nothing to eat. And he says, and if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the wayside. So they were in need of help. And you know this morning, first of all, I'd like to say that Jesus said here, and if. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew that he wasn't going to do it. Jesus knew just exactly what he was going to do for these people, and he knew what was in the congregation, what was in the whole multitude of people. He knew how much food there was. He knew the whole thing. Amen. But he, to prove to them that he had compassion on them and because that he was great, and that was the reason why that they followed him here anyway, because they had seen a, a lot of the miracles that he had done, and so they seen him coming, uh, going, and they followed him, and, and he here wants to uh, reemphasize the fact that he is the Christ, and he says, and if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the wayside for divers of them or, or some of them came from far away. So here he says, if I send them away fasting. Now, the thing of it is, he said, after they have, after the, they have been fed and they're strengthened, they have come from a long way or some of them have, and they'll be more uh, able to walk that distance back and to be, uh, cheerful about what they have heard, what they have seen, and be able to tell others about it. But if they're if they're weak in the body, then listen, they can't do these things. And this morning, you know, we we cry out against this old flesh, and and we know that it's sinful, and we know that it's wicked. But the thing of it is, it's our duty in our spirit to help this flesh stay in 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 grace with the, or, or stay in order with the, with the father mm. and to keep it healthy and there's no you know it's a sin this morning for people to damage their bodies willfully with drugs and with uh, right. alcohols and things of this nature because <clears throat> listen it's not pleasing to god because listen this this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, a, a lot of people won't, won't go along with that, but the Holy Spirit comes and dwells and makes its abode with us. And so this flesh needs to be taken care of also. Amen. And it needs the right type of food. It needs food. It needs exercise. It needs learning how to take care of itself. It needs bathing and it needs all of these things to be presentable to the to the world and to the Father as we come to Him and as we pray and uh, the, the, the body needs to be in good shape to mentally wise to understand right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, these are some of the things that he was talking about when he, if he, if he give them food to eat, then they would be more able to go on their way and to tell others about it and go to their own houses. So he says here that they would most likely faint on the, on the road as they left because the thing of it is when he dismissed them he was gone because in all the other places when he 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 dismissed the people he dis, dis, dismissed the disciples first and then he said you go ahead and i'll dismiss this, the, the disciple or the uh, the people and then i'll be on and so he was going to dismiss them but he was not going to leave them in this this weak condition and this morning people you bite it, you chew it, you walk, you you believe it, you feast upon it. He will not leave you 
like a, a condition that you can't get through. Mm. Listen, he is your father. Amen. He is, Jesus is your brother. Jesus is your savior. And he will not leave you like that because he said one place there, he said, before he left, he said, I go to the father. And if I go not, the comforter can't come. Right. And he says, I'm going to send the comforter, or the Father will send the comforter, that he will make his abode with you and give you the uh, uh, the right way to go and the understanding and comfort you. And so here, his, in verse 4, and his disciples answered him, from whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? Good question. And the answer it to the people is, the men that ask it is how. And they did know, not know any way possible to feed this four or five thousand people with the amount of bread and the little fishes that they found. It was impossible. And so they said, how can we do this? Well, this morning, how can we fill this church with people that want to serve the Lord and believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We can't. Right. We have no way Amen. physically to fill this house unless and we do it in a way that is displeasing to the Lord. And if we get out there and wave a $100 bill, everybody that comes in gets a $100. You fill the house. But the thing of it is, what have you got? Right. You've got a lustful church for Amen. people. But now listen, this morning, don't get discouraged, don't leave, don't, don't uh, jump up and say, well, uh, nobody else is coming, I'm going to quit. Listen, give the Lord Jesus Christ time. Mm -hmm. he, wants, he wants to do his thing, but he's got a time for it. He's got a place for it. He'll get honor and glory for it. And listen, this morning, if it don't, if we all die here and there's the empty pews, Listen, all we can do is stay here and say, Lord, help us. And, and when we when we do the last sermon here, we close the doors and we walk out, or when they carry us out with a car in a carton, car, car, in a coffin, listen, that's all we can do. Amen. And this is the same thing that they asked Jesus here. How in this world can we feed four thousand people with what we've got? Notice. And verse 5, and he asked them, how many loaves have ye? He wanted this established this morning. How many people have we got coming to church? 13, 14, 15, something like that. Listen, let it be known. Five years from now, we can look back and say, once the church was nearly empty, now the Lord has blessed us and he's, and he's filled the church. And if we get five years down the road and there's four people here, hey, the Lord's still blessing. Amen. Because he's going to bless his people regardless of how many it is. And he showed us this here when he said here in verse 6, And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples, gave to his disciples, to set before them. Listen, this morning, sometimes, sometimes we get a blessing from the Lord without any, any anybody knowing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's open. Mm -hmm. Listen, when you come up here this morning and sit down in this church and Brother Larry gets up and preaches a message and it rings and it rings and it rings and when you leave it's still ringing, listen, that is a blessing to all. That Amen. is a blessing openly given that you can see and understand and know that he is blessing. Now, you can sit back there in the, in the pew or you can go home and lay down and, and, and dream or you can uh, whatever. You can, you, can, you can understand that God is blessing and he'll show you things in the word. Hey, he hadn't shown, he hadn't shown nobody else. Listen, these are, these are other blessings, but he said to them, set them down in groups and, and, and rows. And so when he did, he commanded the people to sit down. And then in verse 7, uh, or his verse, the latter part of verse 6, he says, and gave thanks and broke the bread, uh, gave the bread to his disciples to set before him. And they did set them before the people 
and they had a few small fishes. And, and he used the word few because he wants to let you know how great he is. Amen. With the little few things that uh, you get sometimes, listen, it can be large. It can be more blessing. Listen, if you can, if you if you have a job making five dollars an hour, God can bless you, and you'll have enough. And if you're making thirty dollars an hour, you wouldn't have it. I, I mean, listen, and that's exaggerated, yeah. but, me, but it ain't for God because God can bless, and He can bless, and He can bless. And so, listen, this morning, these little few little fishes and this loaf, listen, He blessed them. Now, notice. And they had a few small fishes, and he passed, he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. And they did eat and were filled, and they took up the broken meat that was left seven baskets. Now, why did he say broken meat? Well, because all of them were breaking off in pieces. And listen, it's, it, it reminds you of the, the, the little widow woman mm -hmm. that fed. Elijah with the barrel that had the flour in, or the meal in it and listen every time she'd go get a piece or get a dipper full and make them some cakes she'd come back and she'd get it again mm -hmm. and listen it just kept on multiplying and here's a, here's a type of it right here Amen. and so he says so they did eat and were filled and they took up the broken meat that was left seven baskets and so this morning, I jotted down in my uh, Bible as I was uh, studying this, and I thought about the song, Little is Much When God is in it. Amen. And this morning, people, we can, we can depend on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. And, and the Savior of our soul, nothing, nothing more precious than our soul. Amen. Because it's going to live eternally. That's it. And this morning, uh, we, we just need to understand that it is, it is so precious. And he says, verse 9, And they that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. He sent them away full. He'll never this morning leave one of his children to the point that they are they're not full or they're not able to withstand what's before them. Listen, he's always with us. And sometimes you think, well, God just let me down. He's not, he's not, he's not taking care of me. Listen, he does it in his own way. Right. And don't never try to get ahead of God and say, Amen. God, you, 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 you forgot me. You missed it. Listen, he has not forgotten none of you. Amen. None of us. He knows the hair on your head. He knows the wrinkle in your face. He knows everything about you. And listen, why would he forget you? He loves you. And he said up here, I have compassion on these because they are hungry. He said, I have compassion on my people because they need me and because they desire me and because they're asking me for things. I've got compassion and it's theirs. And now listen, the time, the time sometimes it don't happen like you think it should because the most of the time when we holler for all, we expect somebody to jump. Right. But listen, sometimes you just say, Father, and I, and you know, it's, it's, it's the best. Father, when, whenever it's pleasing to you, mm -hmm. help me with this, this problem. Because listen, I've been, <laughs> I've been asking the Lord to help me for several, several years, uh, try to teach a Sunday school class and try to pick out songs for the church. Listen, uh, sometimes I come to church and I think, well, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to or not. But when I walk down from the from the song service, I, I see he has. Amen. And when I go sit down after I uh, teach a lesson, I say, well, thank you, Lord, because listen, you give me the words that I, I, I feel like that he would want everybody to hear Amen. and and it's it's pleasing and, and it's soothing to me and so i get a blessing out of it and and he's blessed and so this morning don't give up on god because he'll never give up on you amen so this morning i want to read something else over in 
in, in verse 10, and then I'll read something else. And straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples and came to the parts of Dal Dal Dalmatheus. And I want you to turn over, if you would, to chapter 10. I want to read something to you this morning. In verse 27. 10. Chapter 10 of Mark, verse 27. And Jesus, looking up upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with the Lord. Now, you remember over here in my lesson this morning, I read uh, in verse 4, And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man, notice, a man satisfy these men with bread here in this wilderness? Now, they couldn't. Right, but now notice here, and Jesus, in verse 27 of Mark 10, and Jesus looking up on them, with men it is impossible, but with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, and here we are, lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake and the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, and precautiousness, Per, per se, causes, and in the world to come eternal life. Now this notice here, he's saying this, that he, in verse 30, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. So listen, he's not forgotten you. He's blessing you. Amen. He's, he's giving you strength. He's giving you health. And listen, all in this world you got to do is just depend on him because He's got it. He's in control. And if you're if you're straight with him, if you're in his will, and if you're not, you need to get in his will. Amen. all closer to him because that way, the closer you get, the sweeter the honey is. And listen, he will love you to death. And he'll show you things that uh, nobody else can show you. And he said here, but in uh, verse 30, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses, brothers, sisters, and mothers, and children, and land per, I can't say the word, and in the world to come eternal life. And so there's a double whammy. He is saying to you this morning, if you if you've left this worldly possessions, all the land and the father and the mother and all of this, and followed him and trusted him and served him. These are the, these are the things that you're assured of. And and listen, why do we get down in the dumps? Well, it's because we get too far away from the Lord, mm -hmm. and we just do not get we just do not understand sometimes how great His love is for us. And so He said here, but notice in verse thirty-one, but many that are first shall be last. And the last first. And I think one thing that he's talking about here is, listen, you don't set time with God. When he gets ready to, uh, to uh, answer your prayer or not to answer your prayer, you'll know it one way or the other. Because, listen, he's not going to leave you out here uh, sitting on the log and, and wondering, when are you going to answer my prayer? Because before long, he's going to let you know something one way or the other. Sometimes we pray and ask for things that we have no need of. Sometimes uh, things changes and, and God sees down, uh, knows down the road, hey, that will hinder you if you get it now. And so after a while, he'll, 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 he'll remember that. But listen, just be patient with God. Amen. Be patient with the Lord Jesus Christ and, and just depend on him. That's all we can do because listen, He's all in all to us. Amen. He's, he's in full control. He's in full charge. And so these things that we have read here this morning, we pray that, hope that it will be a, good, a blessing to you and, and draw you a little closer and encourage you because we need this morning 
need encouraging because listen, the world is knocking us for a fool and, and, and it's discouraging to us and, and we're saying, what in the world is going to happen? Well, we know what's going to happen. The Antichrist is coming on the scene. Mm -hmm. He's getting things ready to take over. Right. And listen, you and I have not got no place living in his authority. And so when that time comes, you're going to hear something say, come up hither. Amen. God has already spoken to his son and say, you go get my people. And so listen, it's that way. And so just be a good cheer. Amen. Be a good cheer for I will come. Amen. So thank you all for the, for the lesson. Amen. Thank you for listening. Amen.